Hey guys, it's Kaz here and today it's funny because I keep saying today as if it's a different day, but I mean the past four videos I've wearing the same top, so but today I'm doing my July what I watched, I can't remember what I called it, something like that. Things I watched and that. So I'm gonna be talking about some stuff that I watched. First of all, Drag Race All Stars. That was on in July and I watched it. It was very good. I very much enjoyed it. Drag Race is just something that you can just watch and enjoy and it's fun and there's fun challenges and the person that I wanted to win won. That's always a bonus and I don't even know what to say. It's just it's just a fun program and I enjoyed watching it and it's about people in drag doing a race. A race to the top to win, not a race in a car or a race on the feet. You know what it's about. Moving on. Next up, I watched Safe. This is on Netflix and it is like a limited series. I can't remember exactly how many episodes, maybe like between six and ten, I feel like it was. Something along there. So I say eight because that's the middle. Anyway, this is like a mystery set in England and it's basically this teenage girl goes missing right at the beginning and it's her father and his sort of secret girlfriend who is also a detective in the police force trying to figure out what was going on. There's also a murder that happens right near the beginning, it's not really spoilers. Basically her boyfriend is murdered so there's this whole thing. Is she an also victim? Was she the perpetrator? Is this completely nothing to do with her missing? Is it everything to do with her missing? There's loads of mystery and stuff and secrets going back many years and all the characters have secrets and it was a fun time. I very much enjoyed this one. It's one of those ones that you don't know what the mystery is going to be. It sort of feeds you very little bits of information so you don't know exactly what's going to happen and then it's boring but it's also not so far-fetched that there was no foreshadowing because neither of them are the best what's best is in the middle where you get little tidbits of information and they all add up to make a complete story and that was where safe was definitely one that keeps you guessing pretty much every single episode there's a certain character that looks dodgy in it and you're like are they actually dodgy or is it made to look dodgy and they're actually doing something not dodgy or are they doing something dodgy but something dodgy that has nothing to do with this missing person yeah, watch it if you have Netflix. It was a good time. Next up, I've been carrying on with Hannibal. I'm about halfway through season three now, which is good because I'd already seen season one and two many years ago. So I rewatched them so I could watch season three knowing what the crap was going on. But it's so weird, season three, it has such a different vibe to the first two seasons. It's like in a, set in a different place and different people know different things. So the whole vibe and the whole dynamic is completely different and it takes a little while to like orientate yourself, especially after that fucking ending in season two, which is one of the best endings ever. And then you go into season three and it's kind of like, oh, but that was so epic and so, and now it feels like it kind of didn't matter but also did matter but not as much as it looked like it should have mattered but I'm enjoying it it definitely took a hot second to get into because of how different the vibes are but I'm excited to see where it ends maybe I'll finish it in August I don't know but I've only got about half a season left so I probably should really Hannibal good times next up I'll be watching something called Hinterland this is a Welsh detective crime thing each episode well it's like i think it's different on netflix than it was in real life because i looked on imdb or whatever i looked on something and on netflix it's like these really long episodes maybe an hour or hour and a half long and then there's two episodes that make one of the crimes but then i think when it was put out on tv it's probably like split up into one two three four that makes no difference to anyone that is information that it doesn't even need to to be going into anyway this one, I really enjoyed the first episode or the first murder. I was very much engaged in that one. The I think I've seen two more, it's not two more episodes because I like two episodes each, two more contained stories in there that didn't grab my attention as much. But it's kind of one of them things I can put on in the background when I'm doing something else. You know, if you've been here, if you've watched my other two videos of what I've been watching, 
then you know that I'm about that crime detective murder mystery sort of vibe on my TV shows because it's something that I very much enjoy and it's easy to watch. You don't have to 100% pay attention most of the time depending on what it is about. You can kind of do all the stuff at the same time but it's still enjoyable and yeah it's one of them. Next up I watched Three Identical Strangers. This is a documentary on Netflix and it's about these three triplets who figured out they were triplets at like 18 or 19 or something crazy like that. So basically one of them went to went off to college, university, whatevs and a bunch of people there were like oh hey and saying somebody else's name and then he realised that that was his brother that he'd never met before. So then there was loads of like news coverage about these oh these twins that found each other and didn't even know that they were twins blah 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 they've been adopted in different places and then somebody else saw them newspapers and was like hang about those two people also look exactly like me and there were triplets that had been split and didn't know they were triplets and it was very much interesting it went in a w in a different way than i was expecting i thought it was gonna be these three people and then they're talking about it but when we go into this whole sort of psychological thing and testing and being split up on purpose for different reasons and yeah it was interesting give it a go if that sounds interesting to you next up i've been carrying on with sense8 so for some reason i don't know why but when i watch sense8 like i watched the first maybe one or two episodes of season one and then for like six months i didn't watch any and then i watched a few more and then for like another four months i didn't watch any so i started it fucking ages ago literally like a year a year or two ago and for some reason i was watching one or two episodes even though i really enjoy it and it captured me for some reason i was just never in the mood to like watch more in a row even though i'm normally that guy that binge watches a series in one go for some reason with that show i was just but then in july i think i had three episodes left of season one and i blasted through them and then i watched like another four episodes of season two so i actually got into it and watched loads of it and i very much enjoyed it I already knew I enjoyed it. I don't know why I didn't watch it. So yeah, Sense8, that's a thing that people have watched and people know about and I'm finally getting on that properly. And it's a good time. It was a bit weird when season two popped around and one of the guys is a different actor, but it's kind of funny because his friend was like, hey, you look different. And then he says something like, oh yeah, I got a haircut. And he's like literally a different actor. So I enjoy the fact that they put that little hint in there just to be like, yes, we know, but also shush it's fine so that was a nice little funny injection there but yeah we're getting to know more about all the stuff all the sensei all the weird stuff the psychological stuff the what the crap's going on stuff the baddies that are after them the powers the going here the going there it's a good time so yes i'll be happy to carry on season two and then i think there's only two seasons and then they brought it back for a film length one because everyone moaned so we're getting there and hopefully, because they did manage to come back with that last ending, hopefully it all wraps up and the story is complete. So we're about halfway through now, so obviously it's time for a message from our sponsors. Take it away. Oh, I see. I see, so I'm guessing he didn't subscribe, did he? That's awkward. Pretty sure you should subscribe, guys. Just saying. Next up, I watched three episodes of Trial by Media and because I didn't watch as much this month as I have in previous ones, I'm going to go into the episodes a little bit individually because basically this is a show, it's like mini little documentaries, each episode is just over an hour long so it's like its own thing but it's under the umbrella of Trial by Media, talking of umbrellas, you know, in a few minutes. Um, but yeah, so I watched three episodes, the first episode was about the talk show killer so basically with that one, this guy called Scott Barnard Amadeur went on to this talk show in America, I forget the name of it, it doesn't exist anymore, and confessed his gay crush on his friend, Jonathan Schmitz, and then on the show it was like awkward, awkward, obviously they've got the recording of it, and then three days later, Jonathan shoots and kills Scott, boom, so yeah, basically each of these things, there was a big media presence and that's the whole gist of the documentary type things like how that how the media portrayal and how the media influence influenced 
the trials and the way different people were perceived and stuff like that. The second one was the Subway Vigilante, which happened in New York in the 80s. I can't remember when the first one happened. But yeah, in that one, a guy called Bernard Goetz was on a subway and shot four black teenagers. All four of them survived. One of them was paralyzed and brain damaged. And then I think, it didn't really talk about the other three, so I think they must have got shot, obviously went to hospital, and then it turned out all right. But then he was called a vigilante, everyone was praising him, he shot, shot off four people on a subway, but it was fine because they were criminals and they wanted to rob him. And then it was this whole thing about whether that's acceptable. America has some fucking crazy ass laws about what is and what isn't. Um, what's the word? Defending, defending yourself, what is and isn't defence. In England, it's actually happened quite near where I live. I think it was in the 90s or the early 2000s. A farmer near to where I live, there was some boys robbing his farm. He shot them with a shotgun. One of them died and he went to prison because in England, you can't just go around killing people even if they are robbing your house. Whereas in America, you can kill people or shoot four people on a subway full of other people who are potentially trying to rob you and then that's seen as a good thing and everyone praises you because america's fucking weird but yeah so that's that one and then the last one definitely stuck with them with me the most it hit me the most it was called 41 shots and it's basically these four police officers killed a unarmed black man 22 years old who would come over from a different country to try and better himself to get education so he could go back to his own country it was called amadou diallo and basically he was trying to get into his own apartment he was stood in an alcove and the police shot at him 41 times 19 of the bullets hit him and then the police are trying to say that that's okay that that's fine they got away with it of course they did and yeah, that episode has really stuck with me because this happened in 1999 and there was loads of footage of people protesting, saying no justice, no peace. And the fact that they were protesting in 1999 saying no justice, no peace. And in 2020, that's still happening because people are still getting shot up by the police. Black people are still getting shot up by the police for no reason. And yeah, that one just really stuck with me. And obviously all four of them got off. It was also really dirty because it happened in the Bronx and then there was a, they were like saying oh well we're not going to get a fair trial over here because all these people are obviously going to say we're guilty so let's move it to a conservative part of America that has like a very small amount of black and people of colour and it's conservative and loads of white people because that's going to be more impartial isn't it? You're just doing exactly the opposite of what you say and staying in the Bronx would do. And yeah, it was just really annoying because they went on, you know, they showed you the oath. Because again, America's weird, so they just film all of their courts and trials in America. You know, they've literally got the flipping court TV, whereas in England you have to get a flipping drawn out picture because you ain't going in there. So yes, different cultures. But yeah, you see them all crying on the stand like, oh, oh, well, we were scared for our life this young black man on his own and there was four of us and he wasn't facing us but we were scared for our life and 41 shots is just a normal thing to do to somebody and then one of them was all like oh after I sat with him and I was praying that he made it I'm like bitch you were the one that just shot him what do you mean you're praying he was made it don't fucking shoot someone up and then act like you feel sorry for it and then that's enough justice and then you don't get done for it and then two of them stayed in the police force two of them went to the fire brigade and then, you know, retired with commendations, as they do. Just like that one the other year. They gave flipping the victim back to the guy and then he stayed in the police force and then got commendations and... So yeah, there was that. Let's move on because I'm getting aggy. The last show I watched, a little bit of foreshadowing earlier when I said Umbrella, was <laughs> Umbrella Academy season two. I only watched the first five episodes though, so shut up, don't spoil me down below stop it i've probably watched it by the time this goes out but anyway even if i have shush but yeah the season came onto netflix at the end 31st of july the last day of july and i watched five episodes half the season and it's a very much enjoyable i very much enjoyed it and loved it and loved the characters and it was fun 
and they've always got a really cool soundtrack as well. I love the way they put the music together in Umbrella Academy, it's very good. And it pretty much jumps off straight at the point of where the first season ends, so I can't really say much, but it's good. I feel like there's a slightly different tone, not in a bad way or in a any sort of way, it just feels a bit different, but I also very much enjoyed it and all the characters. They time travelled, I don't want to spoil anything about the end or anything or anything or anything of the season one or anything. But there's some time travel that went on and they're in a different time and the way each character deals with it, I very much enjoyed seeing. So I also like to talk about a new to me YouTuber on these, just one that I've been blasting loads. And in July, I did start watching him in June, but I put some other people in my June one. But in July, I've been blasting loads of Lewis Buchan. He is a Scottish YouTuber and he just basically does fun videos and just talks about stuff that's fun. And I just, I don't know why it took me so long to subscribe to him or even to know who he was or you know, acknowledge his existence because he seems to be friends with like every single YouTuber that I watch and I'm subscribed to and somehow I didn't know he existed until now and especially at the beginning of July when I was still kind of new to his channel I literally just binge watched so many of his videos just like let's watch 10 videos today of Lewis Booking because I've watched everything in my subs so let's do that and yeah I just He's funny, he's Scottish, that's all you need. So let me know down below what you guys watched in July. If you've watched any of the things that I watched, if you want to now I've mentioned them, let me know down below. And if this is your first video by me and you enjoy it, then please check out some of the others. And if you continue to enjoy, then please subscribe, that'd be awesome. Anyway guys, I'll see you in a few days with another video. Bye.